Hey everyone, it's Megan and today we are talking about how to find how many carbohydrates you need. I get asked this question every single day. Hey Megan, I have type 2 diabetes. How many carbs can I eat in a day or per meal or per snack? And I'm going to get into depth with this today and tell you and show you why there is no easy answer for this. It's actually a lot that goes into it and it's very individual from person to person, but it is 100% possible to find the amount of carbs that you personally need and thrive on, and not just for blood sugar control, but also for overall health. So we're going to talk about what determines how many carbohydrates you need personally. We'll talk about where to start and a few other factors that are crucial to consider when finding out how many carbohydrates you need. I'll also touch on why a zero-carb approach may not be the way to go. But before we get started, I wanted to let you know that I've opened up four more spots in my Drop Diabetes program. This program is designed to provide a very clear path for you to drop your A1C below diabetes range and keep it there. It's for people who are really serious about their health and about their desire to control diabetes rather than the other way around. This is specifically intended to help you cut all of the guesswork and learn what actually works. So in this program, you'll get to work with me personally. You'll get all of the knowledge and tools you need to reverse your diabetes for good. And at the end of this video, I will show you how you can learn more about that. But let's dig in now to how many carbs you need per day. Have you ever been told to eat a low carb diet and then sent off on your own without any more advice? This leaves you feeling very confused and overwhelmed. So maybe you start your own internet research and suddenly you become more confused because every single thing you read, every article or every influencer whose ad pops up has something different to say. And the worst part is there's no way to find what is good information and what is misinformation, and you're not alone. I get questions every day about how many carbs are appropriate per day or per meal, or even what foods are safe for people with diabetes. People tell me that if they just knew exactly how many carbs to eat, they could control their blood sugar and lower their A1C. But the reason that an easy answer is hard to find is that there's no one easy answer. No person needs exactly the same nutrition even when we're talking about carbs for blood sugar control. But let me break this down for you. Here is how to determine how many carbohydrates you need. First of all, everyone is different. Not anyone with type 2 diabetes needs the same amount of carbohydrate. And your body is not the same as your neighbors or your brothers or your Facebook friends or anyone else's. You have unique needs based on a bunch of factors, including metabolic rate, insulin resistance level, carb sensitivity at different times of day, which is likely guided by your circadian rhythms, sex, race, um, height and build, past experiences like different diets you've been on or trauma, emotional state, even your activity level, and a bunch of other health factors also contribute to this. So it's important to find your ideal carb level for your body. But where do you start? Most people start between 15 and 30 grams per meal, and snacks can vary. But if you happen to have a high carb sensitivity or you're very insulin resistant, you might need a little less. On the flip side, if you're less insulin resistant or you're lowering and improving insulin resistance using the methods that I teach, then you may need more carbohydrate. A safe place to start is 20 grams per meal and about 10 grams per snacks if you're someone who needs snacks. Then increase this or decrease this based on your blood sugar levels, your feelings and symptoms, your hunger level. Are you feeling fatigued at certain times of the day or really hungry or maybe even shaky if you have low symptoms or headaches if you have high symptoms? Now this may seem daunting to figure out and maybe, but it doesn't have to be. Using the strategies that I walk my drop diabetes participants through, you can find your sweet spot and eat to your needs, not just to control blood sugar, but also so that your body can thrive and you can feel healthy and more carefree. If you need help with this step, email me. I promise that I will respond to you. But it's not all about grams of carbohydrate. 
This is the most important part, and it's so much more than just counting grams of carbohydrate. In fact, if you count only grams of carbohydrate, you will not succeed in this. Nutrition is a multifaceted and complex topic, so it's crucial that you are not going to fully understand and control your blood sugars if you're only counting the grams of carbohydrate. There are a few other factors that play a role in blood sugar stability, and I'm going to cover a few of them now. The first is the nutritional quality of that certain carbohydrate food. So if a carbohydrate food is really wholesome and contains blood sugar stabilizing nutrients, it's actually going to affect blood sugar much differently than carbohydrate foods that have poor nutritional value. For example, a really nutritious wholesome food like whole grains or strawberries is going to affect your blood sugar a lot differently than white bread or hard candies. To learn more about that, I actually go way in depth in a blog article that I'm going to post the link to below so you can read that to get more information there. The next is what you're eating or drinking with that certain carb food. So protein, fat, and fiber stabilize blood sugar. So eating a cup of pasta will raise blood sugar more than eating a cup of pasta with chicken and asparagus, which is a good protein and a good fibrous vegetable. Same as eating a cup of grapes will raise you more than eating a cup of grapes with a cheese stick. It comes down as well to the portion of food. Of course, portions are important when it comes to carbohydrates because the carbohydrate foods are the only nutrient that directly raises blood sugar. For example, if you have three cups of watermelon at a summer barbecue, you are going to raise a little too high, most likely by itself. But an appropriate one cup of watermelon should do the trick. If you have it with lunch with your protein and fibrous vegetable, even better. It also depends on time of day. Are you most carb sensitive in the morning or the evening? Your body's rhythms dictate how you digest, how you absorb, and how you utilize carbohydrates. Many of my Drop Diabetes program participants actually need more carbohydrates at certain times of day and less at other times of day. It depends as well on the type of day. If your activity level, stress level, hormone balance is different from day to day, which it is, then you may need more or less carbs depending on what your day looks like. This is especially true for women in their menstrual cycle. So it's important to pay attention to your body's hunger cues, fullness cues, and symptoms to know whether you need more carbohydrate or not as much. If you cap yourself at 20 grams for the morning and then you get to 11 o'clock and you feel shaky, you need to eat carbohydrates. Your body's asking you for them. It also depends on your metabolism and your insulin resistance level. People with type 2 who have high insulin resistance will need lower carb intake than those who have a lower insulin resistance. And ways to improve insulin resistance include doing exercise that is resistance related, like weightlifting or body weight exercises. It's also important to maintain a good consistent eating pattern and feed your body faithfully. So these are just some of the things to consider when considering how many carbs you need in a day, because it's not just about grams of carbohydrate. There's so much more that goes into this. Now, let's touch on why zero carb is not usually the way to go. There is a reason why carb-free diet trends come and go over the years and the decades. From Atkins to keto, the rise and fall of these diet trends should be a big red flag for anybody, especially someone who wants to reverse type 2 diabetes and be healthy overall. The truth is they don't work long term for almost everyone. Very low carb diets are effective in lowering blood sugar levels and weight in the first few months, but the majority of people, in actually less than 1%, actually thrive and work well with a zero carb diet for more than a year or even a few years. And why? Well, there are a few reasons that I'll cover today. Carb foods contain essential nutrients that just aren't found in other food areas. This creates negative symptoms such as fatigue, chronic constipation, 
vitamin and mineral deficiencies, which leads to things like hindered liver function, which we don't want if we're trying to reverse diabetes. It's important to note that simply taking a supplement and doing a zero carb diet does not fix this problem. Another reason is that most people abide by a no carb food list, which is very restrictive. And these food lists are never comprehensive. There's a billion foods in this world, and that list of 20 to 100 foods may work for you in the first week, but definitely not in the first month and absolutely not in the first year and ongoing. So it's important to actually take into account overall wholesome foods, which aren't taken into account on these food lists. It's just telling you what has no carbs. And that's what leads to health issues down the road, like heart disease. So again, keep into consideration overall health, wholesome foods, and don't become a slave to a food list. Restricting can really lead to binging and even carb and sugar cravings. So if you want to learn more about carbohydrate and sugar cravings, I've attached another blog link below that really goes in depth with not only managing carb cravings, but also preventing them. One of the biggest things I see with these zero carb diets or very, very low carb diets is enhanced sugar cravings. And what this is, is your body trying to regulate itself and trying to tell you that you need more nutrition. And it's getting misregulated because you're, you're depriving it of some of that nutrition. So those sugar cravings are coming from a place of your body trying to tell you what it needs. So these diets really aren't sustainable. And maybe you've heard that before, but let me expand on this. So often I hear from frustrated people that they've tried a lot of things in the past and nothing has worked or they just couldn't stick to it. And this leads to large fluctuations in blood sugar and weight and overall wellness. It not only fuels negative feelings around your body image, but also contributes to poor health and excessive weight gain in the future. Diabetes is a long-term condition. Why choose short-term results? Remember, it's easy to get narrow-sighted and think that simply counting grams of carbohydrate will help you control your blood sugar, but this will not give you lasting success in controlling type 2 diabetes. To be truly successful, you really need to learn and understand how foods affect your blood sugar as well as overall health, and find the methods and strategies that work best for your body and your lifestyle. So where to go from here? To find your ideal carb needs and learn how to eat well, not only to control diabetes, but also to conquer your health, apply for the Drop Diabetes program. If you want to learn more about it, click the link below to schedule a free call with me where we'll talk about whether you're a good fit for the program and how it can help you. If you're ready to apply, you can click the apply link below this. And thank you all for watching today. I hope it was beneficial for you. And if you have any questions or topics that you'd like to learn more about in the future, let me know, leave a comment below, and I will get to those. See you next time.